multi-award-winning author Stacey Gregg is one of our most popular children's writers. She won the Children's Choice Awards for Junior Fiction three years in a row for her standalone novels The Princess and the Foal, The Island of Lost Horses and The Girl Who Rode the Wind. She is here now to tell us all about her latest work The Thunderbolt Pony, which is a finalist in the 2018 New Zealand Book Awards for Children and Young Adults. It is really, really lovely to have you in the studio, Stacey. Thank you, Mel. Welcome. Thanks, Mike. Now, let's tell me, you've written so 13 books in the Secrets series, yep. isn't it? So tell us about those, or what, what's the theme here? Day... <laughs> It's all right. It's just some, it's just a ship knocking over the water. Over We're excited all good. about pony box. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, they were the first books I ever wrote, and uh, a series of thirteen, and they were kind of vaguely set around I imagined Narrowahe Pony Club, which was the pony club I went to when I was a kid, and then after that, I started from the Princess and the Foal onwards. I started working on standalone hardbacks that were always based on true stories. So the first one was the true life story of Princess Hire of Jordan. So I had to go to Jordan to research that wow, one. Wow, nice. Um, the next one was, I always tried to set them in glamorous places. I, I went to Russia. The latest one has, um, I've just been researching, has been in Iceland. So I've just been to Iceland. So it's very clever, that. isn't it? Yes. Setting your books in exotic locations <laughs> so you have to go and do all the research. Absolutely. Always set your books in places you want to go on holiday. Well, what got you into it in the first place? I was a pony girl. Right. I was mad keen on ponies and I just thought, well, if I was going to write a book um, and my, I just had my daughter, I was a journalist, I was a fashion journalist and I thought, well, I can't really get to the office, I can't get my act together in time to do interviews, maybe I'll just knock out a novel instead and it kind of just went from there. So you make that sound really easy, but was it a big leap for you to go to do it? To do it? Um, it, well, it, the book, act, the first book I wrote did sit on the shelf at the publisher's house for five years and then they suddenly dusted it off and went, I, why don't we just publish these pony novels by this girl in New Zealand? By then I'd completely given up hope. I shouldn't tell that story because I always think that people who are thinking there's still a chance for my novel, it's been with the publisher for five years now. <laughs> but that's kind of how it happened. And um, the Thunderbolt Pony, which is the one that's up for the New Zealand Book Awards tomorrow night, uh, that is my 22nd book, so I've oh, been doing sure. it for a while now. Nice yeah. work. And the tagline in The Thunderbolt Pony, when the world is falling about, true friends stay together. So clearly some very strong messages in your books. It's not just about ponies, is it? Mm. Yeah, and this one for me was a particularly important book. Um, for The Thunderbolt Pony, I, it was at a time when my, uh, my daughter had developed OCD and had it quite severely for a while and we were seeing a clinical psychologist and he was helping her to manage it and which which she has done absolutely and is completely on top of it now but it was a real journey mm. and you know not a fun journey so mm. for me writing this book was incredibly cathartic but it was also very important I'd been touring the South Island quite a lot with my previous books and had always noticed the incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder in the kids that I would deal with at schools there. And I think, you know, people underappreciate not just what they went through with the earthquakes, but what they continue to go mm. through. Um, because you've always got that sense that there's another one to come. And that can really mess with your mind yeah, and give you an anxiety be disorder. A really tough way to live. So yeah. the, the, the star of this book is Evie, isn't it? She's 12 and she has OCD yeah. and some other things going on in her life as well. Yeah, and she's just been through the Kaikoura earthquake. She lives in a little town called Parnassus. It's 64 kilometres south of Kaikoura. It's a real place. Um, and But it also, obviously, there's a Mount Parnassus in Greece. So that gave me a chance. I'd also been researching a book um, where, which I was going to set in ancient Greece partly and my publishers didn't like that. So I thought, well, I'm not putting all that research in the bin. I'm going to use it in this novel. So there's kind of, you know, she's slightly imagining that maybe she's a Greek heroine and she's going to get her horse and her dog and her cat all the way from Parnassus, 64 kilometres overland through the aftershocks after the quakes to make it to the HMS Canterbury to get out of um, Kaikoura and get them out with her because wow. of course the adults just want her to leave her animals behind but no sane horsey girl leaves her horse behind so that's, you, you, that's where it came from. You mentioned before you, you dealt with a clinical psychologist, mm. was that for the book or was it for your daughter? Well. Um, Obviously, it started out being for my daughter, and as I started progressing with the idea, and you know, I spoke to my daughter and said, "Look, this is the idea I have for the book," and she kind of went straight away went, "Yep, do it. I, I want you to be able to help other kids." And the amazing thing is that when I go and talk to schools now, and and, and I read from this book, and there's a couple of chapters I can't read because I just burst into tears, but. 
um, I'll always have kids come up to me at the end or during the sessions, which is even better, and they'll say, Leah, I've got, I've got OCD, and, and what mm. sort of, what sort does your daughter have? You know, does she wash her hands or does she do rituals or counting? I didn't really understand how you managed it and how you treated it until we went and saw Hilary Mack, who is um, thanked at the start of the book, and he's the clinical psychologist we worked with, and he was just a game changer. He was incredible. And the character of Willard Fox in the book is absolutely pretty much verbatim him and in so many ways and so you know you cannot help but be influenced by your own life mm. and when it's something as major mm. as this um, it just completely informed the work and oh, so it's a very it's a very yeah, important emotion yeah, yeah yeah well that's good absolutely and a brilliant gift you're giving to people I love it I always think if I don't cry while I'm writing then I'm not doing a good job oh, nice. <laughs> so. yeah. God, you set yourself a hard task here. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to parents um, maybe for helping them recognize or if they think their ch child might have OCD Oh my God, the prevalence of it and the amount of parents who have come to me after this book has been mm. published and said, oh, look, I'm, I'm buying it for my, my child because I think they do have an anxiety disorder and it doesn't have to be OCD. There is so, mm. I think there's so much pressure on kids these days yeah. and you just see the rise of anxiety disorders hugely and um, it just gives them something to identify with. I think, you know, parents probably need to just start a dialogue and that's what I really love about modern kids and I think that's the difference between kids today. And, you know, it's not like these things have suddenly been invented. It's not like no one ever had an anxiety disorder before. But I think modern children feel empowered to talk about it with their peers, with other adults, with their teachers. And that's where the strength comes from. And that's where you'll find a path through it yeah. so that you can, um, you can recover and you can progress. And that is a very, very good thing. Mm, well, thank totally. you so much for stopping by today. Uh, Stacey Gregg's book, The Thunderbolt Pony, is available now from all great bookstores. And the winners of the 2018 New Zealand Book Awards for children and young adults. Good luck with that too, by the way. Thank you. Uh, that's going to be announced at a ceremony in Wellington tomorrow night. Oh, that was so good. Just such a wonderful gift and doing something that you love as well. Good luck.